and welcome to Broken Tool Garage. So, if you've been following along, you know that I've been working on my dad's 97 Dodge pickup. And I've, I've done a whole bunch of work on it. And uh, as you can see, i got Phoenix in here now, so I'm kind of starting on a new project. However, I've delivered my dad's 97 Dodge pickup to him, and I don't have a work truck anymore. So, what am I going to do for a work truck? Now, I've got the Ram Charger, if you all know that, but the Ram Charger isn't exactly a good work work truck. I mean, it'll, it'll do in a pinch, you know, hook a trailer to it or whatever, but it's not a work truck. We come out and got this. This is actually a 1973 Dodge pickup. This is a three-quarter ton. Now, what someone has done when they repainted the vehicle, you'll notice a that is not a, a that is not a 73 bed and body line. What they've done is they've replaced the bed with a newer model bed. Yeah, it needs work. We'll just go ahead and open that. But if you see right here, you can tell it's still the 73 cap, right? Because it doesn't have the same body lines in there. And then you can look in the dash and you see the old glass fuses and the old style dash in here. This is what we got. See, they did a pretty good job. They did the wiring harness for the power windows and put the newer model doors on. My favorite mirrors right here. And it actually did come like that uh, with the factory. You can see the trim. The Ram Charger doesn't have that. Even though it's the more squarish body style. Alright. Bench seat. Needs a lot of cleanup here. We've got spare parts. This is actually my dad's old work truck. We did some swapping around, if y'all know how that is. It's... Yeah, see, this is the other thing, the bed. The gas tank's behind the seat in the 73s. I think it was 80, around 1980s when they changed that. When they went to the square body style. So yeah, lots of lovely little things to fix on this one. Overall, pretty pretty solid truck. Just needs uh, some TLC. It's a 1973. Uh, yes, it is manual transmission, not factory. So that was kind of hodgepodge together in there. But it's work truck. Oh, big pop hood. Pop. Yeah, one time it's uh, nice and painted, but that looks like they used a single stage paint on it. Ugh. Good hit springs, good hit springs. All right, this is what we got on the inside. We have actually the 318 engine from my 90 model Dodge pickup, that red and white truck. I replaced that 318 with another one that I built with that huge whiplash cam, so you can watch that one. Right, uh, right there, I think. The card's over here. It's always backwards. So anyways, that card's up there if you want to sound, uh, hear what a 318 with a whiplash cam sounds like. And that 90 model Dodge truck that I had. Ended up selling that one. And that's what we got. And there's a lessons learned here. Don't buy cheap timing chains. Because they break. So as far as cleaning this engine up, now, I have done a lot of wiring and work on this. I wanted to get this thing running good enough to drive it up here. Uh, so, I've got uh, new wires right here for it. Just a stock replacement. Uh, that is a Magnum style coal right there. And as we get into this a little further, I'll show you why I'm doing that. I've done uh, rewired uh, the charging system. Part of it anyway. If you notice this right here. A little yellow wire, and you've uh, seen a couple things on Jim. You'll know that I junkyarded that from a Ford uh, Taurus. So nice little pickup piece right there. It fits. I mean, I didn't even have to cut it. Right, that's just tied right into the battery cable. And I know a lot of y'all like to put a um, a little safety fuse in there, but you know the factory never did that. So. Not on the car that was running this and high output alternator. Still not a bad idea. I may come back and do that later. Figure out a spot to put that. But right now that gets me where it needs to be. Alright, yeah. A lot of work on it. A lot of cleanup. 
but this is the new work truck project. So you can get all the dirt shut on the dirge. There it is. It's not adjusted. Real good. You can see that in there. Part of the grill. The bed is here. So that's good. Uh, there's a lot of little things that's going to be done on this truck. Uh, this this is actually going to be a bit of a, a long-term project. The immediate concern is getting it uh, safe to drive and getting it roadworthy. And then I'll start working on different cosmetic parts of it and upgrades. Ooh, got the sun right there. Uh, so pretty much everything on it uh, is going to be, be replaced, it seems like. Transmission still seems pretty good. Uh, but, yep, that's, that's what we got. All right, so that was an introduction to the 73 Dodge pickup, which is a three-quarter ton truck. So that truck has history with, uh, you know, it used to be my dad's truck, and we did some swapping around, like what I was saying. So it has a history and some story behind that, and the reason why I'm building that truck and not something else, right? So if you follow along with me as I go through that truck, you'll get to see that. All right, you saw um, a little bit, last, if you watched last week, the Ram Charger, got, I got it started. That's kind of where, where I'm going to be shifting to a little bit. I got stuff, I'm, I actually have done quite a bit of work on Phoenix too, but the Ram Charger is actually a, a tagged and insured vehicle with good tires on it. I just need to fix a couple things on there, like the window seals, the, the big uh, seals. I don't know if I can do a picture there. I forget. But anyways, the, uh, the sign glass is there. It leaks there, and a little bit of firewall leaks. And I've been trying to get that fixed. That's why it's in the tent and not really being drove all that much, right? So, object is get as many of these little vehicles that I got right here running and enjoy them. Then I have my choice of what I can go and drive. Right now I'm down to the dark that I pretty much drive. Jim's battery, well it's winter time, the heater core went out and the battery is gone out. So, don't, and well, like weather like today, I, well I'm just not going to drive in it. We got an inch and a half of sleep, as I'm going to call southern snow. And a little bit of freezing rain, so that inch and a half, I can actually walk on the inch and a half of the sleep and uh, all that mix, we didn't get any snow, and I won't sink down into it. All right, well, I'm rambling here, so I'm gonna get on with it. So, hope you enjoyed that content, and now we're gonna to go to the non-car content, Tender Warrior. I'm reading this book, and if you have been following along, you know that I've kind of challenged myself and anyone who wants to read this book to read one chapter a week. And then there's some questions at the end of each chapter that you can answer as well. So this is Tender Warrior by Stu Weber, and I just finished chapter six, and I'm about to start on chapter seven. So chapter six, and answer the questions that I could answer because some of them are just not applicable, apple, applicable, apple, appleable, or whatever. You get the point. So anyways, I'm about to start chapter seven. That'll be next week. I think next week I'm going to have a video as well. I don't remember what it's going to be. I've got a couple things recorded, and during this time that I'm sheltering in from the 27 degree weather and inch and a half of sleet, I'll be working on videos so that you can watch them, right? Hopefully in the warm. All right, well, that'll sum this one up, and I appreciate you watching. Make sure to hit that like, hit subscribe, hit share if you found this useful, and I'll see you next time on Broken Tool Garage.